when looking at non-league, you know, the last week has really seen the polar opposites, the delight of what happened at Lincoln and then what happened at Sutton as well with Pygate. I mean, what, what have you made of what happened at Sutton, first of all? Well, I thought, I have to say, I thought what happened at Sutton was, was a little bit sad, really. I, 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 um, I, I just thought it was a kind of example of um, a club that, I mean, I... I went there for the game, um, the game against AFC Wimbledon, and everybody at Sutton was absolutely terrific. And it was a really good, it was a really good day. It was a, it was a, it was a great occasion. And I say the club, I thought, covered themselves in glory that day. It was just a really good FA Cup occasion. And then I just thought that the whole FA Cup run thing got away from them a little bit and they went down avenues that they didn't need to go down and um, whatever your opinion of of the sun I thought it was kind of silly for them to get involved in being sponsored by um, some bets just because it's a divisive newspaper and I thought that, I thought that sucked a little bit of the uh, goodwill um, away from them because the sun evoked strong opinions in, in in some people, um, I didn't think they needed to do that, and um, I just thought that the pie thing, I kind of, you know, it was funny in some ways, but I just, I just thought, what it was, Tom, I just felt that um, kind of greed had got in the way a little bit, and I thought that for a club like Sutton, who are obviously a really well-run club, um, I hope and think that they made a reasonable amount of money out of their cup run and I just thought they didn't really need to do that they didn't really need to start going down those roads um, and I, I did think it, it tarnished it a little bit really sadly I mean, you know, you look at Sutton and what happened there and then what's happening with Lincoln, a team that could, at the end of the season, win the treble. I mean, it's an, an incredible feat for a non-league side. You know, it, very, nearly impossible, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But what, what have you made of Lincoln? Because the Cowley brothers have just done an incredible job since taking over. Yeah, they have done an incredible job. And I, um, I'm in incredibly pleased for Lincoln. I mean, I've got fond memories of... Um, going to Cinsel Bank myself, I mean, a long time ago now, but when I was, uh, when I used to sort of go to away games regularly with Stockport um, County, and uh, I love going to Lincoln, and I believe that the guy is still there with the air raid siren, I don't, I don't know, but I mean, that was, you know, that's one of the kind of, um, that is one of the kind of landmarks of, of uh, well, it used to be of lower division football, but now non-league football, I think, and, and those are the kind of things that, to me, make football. Um, but they just have, absolutely, as you say, the Cowboys have just been terrific for the club and for the game. I mean, I must admit, I, you know, I, I say the Sutton thing, I think Sutton were great, but it just got spoiled in the end. But I think Lincoln have just, the way they've, um, the way they've sort of behaved, the way, the way they've conducted themselves, not to mention the results they've managed to achieve has just been fantastic and I think it's been a an absolutely terrific advertisement actually for non league football and for the and for the quality and the ambition of non league football. And I suppose that's the thing when talking about non-league football, obviously Stockport County, a, a sleeping giant that, you know, some people think, oh, well, they're in the, the top tier of non-league football. Obviously, they're not. They're in the second tier. And, you know, you look at the National League North now, there's a lot of teams in there, especially in the top six places with big fan bases. And it really just shows you the quality that is there. Well, it does. And it, I think it, it shows you the quality, but it also shows you the depth of support I think for clubs um, outside the Premier League um, and and the sort of the, the supporting tradition I think uh, in football in this country and I mean I, I wasn't able to go unfortunately which is a story of um, my life at the moment with Stockport but I, I think there were over were there more than 5,000 fans at the game with, um, with SC United recently and I think you know that's that's developed into a really quite a tasty rivalry. Obviously, you've got Salford City in that division at the moment, who, are, who have got incredible ambition with the under Gary Neville.
level and gigs, etc. I mean, they seem to be really going places. I mean, Bile have got some money behind them and seem to be clear at, the, clear at the top of the table. Um, but, you know, there's some great great names in, in that division and it, it, it does really seem to be to be thriving at the moment, which is fantastic to see. And I suppose that's the thing when looking at non-league in general, really, that there, there does seem to be that that the quality is going up. You know, it it now really is a case that there are them young guns that are breaking through. You know, and I think a, a good example of someone who's willing to go down, you know, to then get the move back up was Theo Robinson, who went to Lincoln for a few months and then gets the move to Southend. And it does seem like non-league, you know, is becoming more more appealing to players, you know, within league football. Yeah, you're right. It does seem that way. I mean, only my knowledge of that, I, I've got to say, Tom, is, is, is limited. But I, I just think that the, um, generally, you know, I think that the Premier League clearly is, is a, I mean, it, it's fantastic to watch um, in many ways. And I really hesitate to use this, this phrase, but it's, it's a great, it's a great product. It's, it's you know, it's, it's uh, some of the football is great. We've, we've, we've got many of the best footballers in the world playing in the Premier League now. But I think there are a lot of things that um, a lot of a lot of areas that the Premier League doesn't fulfil for for football fans these days. Traditionally, for particularly for more traditional fans um, like me, and I think one of those things is being able to get close to the players, close to the action, feel like you're part of part of a proper club and a proper community club and I think sometimes it's hard to get that at the Premier League now and I think I think the, when you go to non-league in particular I mean I I um, for a while partly because um, they used to be in the in Conference North um, they stopped Portal come and play but I, I went to um, I started watching Oxford City um, a little bit and play at Marsh Lane just sort of um quite near the centre of Oxford and I took my little boy along and I mean it's, it's just a great experience you know it's just nice to be able to lean on the stanchions watch the game um, be close to the players hear what the managers and the coaches are shouting hear some of the interaction get you know get used to standing with groups of fans again um, you know and I went, I went quite a lot to Oxford City, I went to Bracken Town a few times, same kind of atmosphere there. And I think it just it just scratches a bit of an itch, non-league football. It's almost, it's kind of, um, there's a nostalgia, I think, attached to non-league football in a, in a weird way, and that it kind of reminds us of the way it used to be, of the way football used to be in some ways, and I, I don't want to knock... You know, I'm, I don't want to sort of sound totally against modern football because that would be stupid, but I just think actually the two things complement each other. They're very different, but they complement each other. 